Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. This is episode 98. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this knitting show from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I'm a Swedish expat, but I live here with my Australian husband and our two daughters who are nine and five. This is my little corner of YouTube. It's my time to sit down, relax and talk about things that I really enjoy. I mostly talk about knitting, but sometimes I talk about spinning, crochet, hand dyeing of yarn, just really what I have been up to, which is normally mostly knitting. <laughs> Let's see, maybe now when the weather is warming up and we're getting to summer, I may, might even do some sewing, you never know. Thank you so much for joining me here in my studio today. Thank you um, if you are joining us for the first time just to see, check this out, see what it's all about. Thank you so much for giving it a chance. And if you have come back after watching previous episodes, thank you so much for coming back. Today it is all knitting, I think. Yes, all knitting, which is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. So I have some knitting to share with you. I have been doing some dyeing. You can see some new um, skeins up here that I have been dyeing since last. Uh, we'll see if I get to talking about them, but um, otherwise I'll do that another time. Let's see. You can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Rosehip Chick. And Ravelry is a great place to go and check out any of the projects that I'm working on. Everything is under my project pages as Rosehip Chick. We also have a group in on Ravelry, Rose Hip Knits podcast group, and there's currently a year-long cow happening in that group, the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along, which is a knit along where we try to go through all of the Australian states and territories and make a project from um, an indie dyer or from a yarn from an indie dyer from each of the states and territories and I think we have quite a few people that have already completed all the eight entries which is fabulous and there are some that have uh, completed more than one project from each state and territory so um, we'll just we'll keep going to the end of the year and just keep adding those amazing projects in the Ravelry group. Rosip Island is my small business where I dye yarn and I sell my yarn on Etsy. I also have um, a little bit of stock in the wool shop in Launceston in northern Tasmania and I will also shortly be having a small selection at the Artisan Ram in Launceston which is a cozy little uh, studio shop um, in the CBD of Launceston. Actually I have uh, started a Facebook account for Rosie Island um, there were a lot of things that I wanted to join in with that were only happening on Facebook and I don't really use my personal Facebook account which I've had since you know, high school, don't really use that at all so I thought I just wanted to start an account that was separate from personal just so I could access some of knitted longs and things that were happening only on Facebook so I created one for um, under the name Rosie Island. Um, so I guess you can find me on Facebook if you <laughs> if you would like to do so. Um, it might be that we start doing things on Facebook, I don't know. For now it's just a way for me to be able to join in on things that are happening on Facebook that are uh, wool and knitting related. It's a beautiful spring day here today and I have my door slightly open so you might be able to hear some sounds from outside. It's quite windy. I think recess has finished at the school that is just down the road, so you might not be able to hear the children anymore. You might be able to hear birds, you might be able to hear my chickens, but I think most is just wind and, you know, people doing home maintenance and stuff and power tools going on out there. But I have left the door open a bit because it's a nice day. Yes, it's, it's weather is getting nicer. Days are getting longer. We have a brooded chicken. So I actually on the weekend went and bought some fertile eggs um, from a, a local person and I put them under our broody hen and she's been sitting on those eggs now for a few days. 
So we'll see what happens with that. Our chickens are very much free range. They, even though they have the most beautiful chicken coop, nice nesting boxes, they will not spend more time there than necessary. So they have all decided that they prefer to lay their eggs out in the garden, out under various conifers. Um, and um, yeah, so this chicken that is brooding and is now sitting on these eggs, She's actually sitting under a conifer in the garden and um, I guess that's what she'll do and if there are chicks there are and if you know it will just have to happen if it happens in a natural way because there's not really much I can can do to help her or control it all it's just if it happens it happens otherwise it will not I did say to my husband it's a bit like having a bottle fed lamb lamb and it's something you you want to try it once. Having chicks, it's fun to do it once and then you probably don't want to do it again. <laughs> so we've had, we have done the bottle fed lamb a few years ago, which was great. Um, it was lovely to be able to give that experience to the children. I don't think we'll do it again. <laughs> and maybe that it will be the same for the chicks if we have any hatch. Who knows? Who knows? But yes, spring sign, spring is here. And um, yes, ski season's finished. We have been up to the mountain since I last recorded for some last days playing in the snow. But um, ski season is now over. And uh, yes, we are doing a lot of, well, we, we have to do a lot of things in the garden to tidy up and stuff. So that's, that's happening. Anyway, enough about all of those things. What I am wearing today is my Love Note jumper, Love Note top by Tin Can Knits. I made this using my, um, what's it called, New Merino fingering. It's a traceable, sustainable Australian Merino yarn in a fingering weight, and I held that together with my dainty mohair silk which is a one of those mohair silk blends so I held um, more of a red or raspberry pink red mohair together with a sort of a hot pink um, fingering weight 100% merino and uh, yeah got this fun effect of the color of it and um, I really love this. I had it at work the other day and I just felt so happy and bright and um, had lots of compliments on it. So that was fine. I mean, fine. That was fun. Goodness me. Uh, I think I want to make one again, but I want to make it. Uh, this one I made it quite cropped, like in the pattern, and I think I would like to make it um, more like a, a normal length um, jumper. And maybe with long sleeves as well but that's what I'm wearing and I really love it <laughs> let's talk about knitting what I have I've been up to since I last recorded let me show you some things that I'm working on because I have not finished a single thing I don't know when that last happened a long time ago well, I have been working on a few things, so I'm going to share those with you. Something, something that's almost finished, and I would have finished it if I had not sort of stopped myself. It's my socks that I'm making for the Aussie Dyer Sock Along. Um, this is my Northern Territory entry. It's um, The main yarn of these socks is from Queen Bee Yarns, and she's in Darwin, I believe. She's in Northern Territory. And... Um, had that skein and then I put uh, my coral colored hand dyed yarn in as um, heel and toes um, just plain vanilla socks with an afterthought heel I think I had this finished last time and I have done the second one I'm pretty much at the point I think I have another two rows to do before I do the heel um, before I do the toe and then I'll add the heel and then I'll have a complete pair of socks um, these are my um, 
grab and go project they're my handbag project i guess so i'm only really working on them when i'm out and about or waiting or in the car um i've been tempted to just finish them off to have a finished project but i i also want to have a a project that i can grab and go and have in my handbag and um Yes, I, I I don't need to <laughs> knit socks at this uh, and finish them at the the speed that I normally do. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I just I thought this time I'm going to take my time with the socks and so that I I have them available to work on. But yes, it's only a heel and a toe now, and then I have to start a new pair of socks for my handbag knitting. But that's um one so this is the main yarn Let's see if I have a tag for it yes and it's called the cat's eye and it's from Queen Bee Yarns and I know that um I think she took a bit of a break and she doesn't dye very often and have things on Etsy very often and I think she's the only dyer in the Northern Territory so to do the grand challenge in our knit along and completing a project from each state and territory that makes it a bit tricky but that's why i put it in uh sort of rules or guidelines that if you want to or need to you can swap any of the states or territories territories with a hand dyed yarn from new zealand so if you have um well if you are missing yarn from any state or territory but you have New Zealand hand dyed yarn available to you, you can use that instead, if that makes sense. But yes, that's um, my sock and that um, yarns that I've used. So they've, they've been fun and easy to work on. And what else have I worked on? Another thing that you have seen before, let's see in my bag here. And I think I have worked on this quite a bit since I last showed it to you. And this is my Atarax. Atarax? Ataraxia Cow by Vicky Vera, a Swedish designer, and she's also an indie dyer. Uh, this is my Brioche Cow. I think I'm on like round 37 out of 55, so not very far to go. And I am using some Merino singles from Finch Yarns that I bought together. I thought they'd go very nice together, and I think they do. This will be bright and, and fun. And it's nice and soft. So I was working on that quite a bit. I had it up with me up the mountain in the lodge, and I was knitting on it there. Um, but then I had this test knit that was happening and then I started another project and now it's been sitting for a while. But it's not far from finished and um, I've been dyeing some merino singles now. I've only had it in my shop as minis before but now I have some full 100 gram skeins of merino singles as well. Because I really, um, I really quite enjoy working in it, with it in projects like this. And after I finish this, I'm quite tempted to start knitting a shawl. I haven't knit a shawl for a very long time. I just have felt like I have so many shawls and I just wanted to knit jumpers. But I think for a summer project, I'm going to make a shawl out of some merino singles. Or maybe I'll do the shawl that I, I bought a pattern for and I was going to make. And the chevron, Shasha chevron shawl, I think it's called. For Amber Bryan. We have a mohair here and then a fingering weight yarn. So maybe I'll do a single, merino single and a mohair here and do that. We'll see. But that's that cow. I really enjoy it and it'd be great when it will be finished. I probably won't be able to wear it until next um, cold season. <laughs> the next two things that I am going to show you that I'm working on, I had not started last time. And that's probably the reason why I haven't finished anything really because I've started new things. I was talking about that I was going to make a, a test knit 
and I didn't know if I could share any information. Excuse me. But I now know that I can share this project. And um, what I am using for this are my Coroa fibres that I bought at um, Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show, or the Australian Sheep and Wool Show in Bendigo. So I have these three colours. This is my main colour that I have three skeins of, and the other ones I have one of each. And let me see. Can you see? Oh, this is the Coroa fibres. Um, this is a kind that I bought as well in the natural colour. So what I decided to do, well, no. What I signed up to do was to test knit for Truly Myrtle, Libby Johnson. When I bought my Coroa fibres in those three colours, I had in my mind that I was going to make a fluicy cardigan because there were quite a few of the the people that I shared a house with when I went to Bendigo, quite a few of the the people were, or the women, were going to make fluicy cardigans. And I was very tempted to do, do that too. So I knew that I needed a main colour and two contrast colours. So I had that in mind when I bought those um, skeins from Coro Fibres. But then when I thought about it, I thought, oh, I don't really want to make a cardigan where I have to purl because my, my knitting in flat is just not very even <laughs> and I don't really like purling much and I knew that it was just not going to be very enjoyable and then someone told me that Libby was going to um, make her fluicy cardigan as a jumper version and she put out a call for test knitters for this fluicy 2 which is the fluicy jumper so I signed up for that and um, that's what I've been working on. So I made a little swatch in the round with my main colour. And um, I am a very loose knitter, which you will know if you've watched before. And this fluicy sweater, the, the gauge, I think is 27 stitches per 10 centimetres, which for me is quite tight. Um, and even though this yarn is quite thin, I think it's almost like a three ply. It's a very thin four ply fingering. Um, even though it is that, and I knitted on two millimeter needles, I I think I'm like just oh well under the twenty seven stitches per ten centimeters. So hopefully uh, it did go together a bit when I washed and blocked it. So that's nice. It's quite a nice fabric. Um, I just I can't I can't get it any any tighter, and I can't imagine using another yarn would make it tighter because this is quite thin. Um, anyway, I did that. I thought it was okay. I chose a size, and I started on my fluicy too. I am almost done with the whole colour work section. So the fluicy is knit with mosaic, knit, mosaic knitting. So it's not actually stranded colour work. It's all, all the colour work is done by uh, slip stitches. So that's what I've done. This black one here is meant to be like a zigzag. I found that quite tricky to create. Uh, hopefully it will look better with blocking. But yes, that's it. And uh, I'm here, sort of here is going to be the same pattern as up here. So you can see I have those, I don't know how many rows left. And then dividing for sleeves and body. And yes, I am knitting on two millimeter needles. It's thin yarn at the moment. I'm at like the widest point, so it's taking quite a while <laughs> to get through it. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this yarn a lot and um, the colors. I'm looking forward to having um, a garment these colors in my my wardrobe. I'm trying to. Um, 
lots of different colors to choose from in my knitted wardrobe and now I have so many jumpers and tops that I can actually sort of pick and choose in the morning what to go for I don't know what I'm going to do in summer when it will be too hot to wear them <laughs> that's what I base my whole outfit on yes yeah, so that's that one and um, what else was I going to say about it this is it's taken a while small needles hmm and this is something that I watched a Norwegian podcast that I haven't watched before. I just found it. I don't know if it was recommended to me or something because I watched some other Norwegian podcasts. It's in Norwegian. It's called Heimstrikke, I think. I don't actually. I don't know how to speak Norwegian. I just understand it when they talk. Um, there are two um, two women that um, didn't talk about the knitting, and they have decided to not buy any new yarn during all of 2019. So they're working from their stashes. So that's interesting to see what they come up with. Um, but I saw one of them had one of these bag blocks on her needles when she was showing one of her projects. And I thought, oh, I've never seen that before. And then with this, because I still have this on quite a, um, what is it called, short needle. I kept, it kept coming off the needles when I got it out of the project bag. So in the end, I went and grabbed one of these in my kitchen, and it works quite well. I don't know if it will damage the, the cords. These are just on Knit Pro Nova, so, um, which I really, I really like these needles, but they're not my sort of precious needles, so we'll just see how, how they go with that bag clip on there, if they'll get damaged or if it's okay. I guess if you're not going to make your project a UFO and let it sit in a corner for years. It should be okay. Yes, yeah, so that's that one. Floozy 2. And I think this pattern uh, is... The release of the pattern is planned for end of October, I believe. And uh, yes, let's see how um, how fast I am when it's all knitting in the round one colour. It could either be quick or boring and slow <laughs> we'll see then I only have one last project to share with you and I might also oh I think I mentioned this last time it's a knit along for mittens and this is for a Swedish podcast on YouTube called Sticklinger and um, it's I think they're only on the second or third episode so it's quite a new podcast and they are doing a mitten knit along I think September October maybe I'm not sure I thought I think it was for eight weeks from the start of September and um, we're all knitting the same pattern and it's a free pattern but it is in Swedish and the pattern is See if there's a front page on my printed copy. Ulinus Vanta. And I think there's a photo. Sorry, my bad black and white copy. That's those. So I decided I wanted to join in on this. I don't really wear mittens, but I enjoy knitting them. So what I decided to do was to use my Australian Gotland yarn that I bought also at the Australian Sheep and Wool Show in Bendigo. So these are hand dyed skeins of um, Gotland yarn uh, from Gotland Sheep in I think New South Wales or is it Queensland? They're cool. uh, so I decided to use those two which I had bought just because I liked the combination of the two and I never really knew what to make them from them. I thought they'd be fun to make these mittens from. So I have started my first mitten. I think I'm up to where I have almost, um, I have to put the thumb stitches on hold. So here it is. That's that one. And I was able to make Latvian braids successfully, which I have tried before, but I never really got it right this time I decided to actually watch a YouTube video with and then everything clicked and I actually understood the instructions so I don't know why I didn't do that previously 
And yes, I have knitted. I think with blocking, the pattern will come up out much more than it is now. It's an interesting yarn to um, to knit with. It feels very rustic, not in the way that it's scratchy or anything, but it's a bit thick and thin, and um, Yes, it has. Um, it's not sort of a flat commercial superwash yarn. It has a lot of um, life to it, I guess. Yeah, so that it's interesting, and that's I think why you can see a bit unevenness in the knitting because it has that thick and thin character. But that's what I'm doing. So I guess this is sort of like half a mitten, maybe. Not even. So I have to do the other. I have to complete it and make another one, but I'm not not in a hurry at all. That's my um that's how I'm I'm that's what I'm trying to tell myself with my knitting now. Like I have um I have limited time to knit and do those sort of things but I really want to enjoy it when I do it and not st stress through it and I don't have deadlines really I mean if I have a test knit I do um, but I only do test knit if I feel like I have plenty of time and I don't have to stress through it because I really want to enjoy it and I want it to be my slowing down and calm time <laughs> and I think especially now with um, winter being over and the cold weather and now we'll be spending more time outside and doing more outdoor activities and just other things and having more energy to do other things um there'll just be less time for for the knitting and things like that but you never know maybe we'll have a summer full of rain where we can't do much more than relax inside who knows but at the moment, I'm trying to just take it slow with my projects. So who knows, maybe next time I record, I also will not have a finished object. I probably will have the socks finished though. <laughs> but that's all of the knitting that I have been working on. I have not been doing any spinning. And I have a, a couple of projects that I haven't worked on at all. Maybe I'll, I'll show you my new Merino single space and a few of these. Um, colorways I did. So I just tried to do some nice sort of spring summer like colors. It's a very pale green tonal in the sort of mauvey pink. And this sort of blue green. It's really hard to capture color of this one comes out much more blue than it is, so it is a bit more green. And then I did a little yellow. Sort of a light mustard. And I think they all go really well together. And then I have done some that are more variegated and speckled. There's uh, just a couple, and then I have quite a few more that are drying at the moment. I was actually going to do some dyeing now and I have yarn soaking for it but I decided um, I can do that maybe tomorrow or later because I wanted to record um, now while I was able to but yes there's there's stuff coming to my Etsy shop um, I'm working on the advent calendars I think there's only one pre-order left now on Etsy and um, that's if I save one lot of the calendars for myself. <laughs> um, I might be able to be convinced to giving mine up, but no, I think I'll, I'll keep mine for myself. But yes, I've, I've dyed everything for the advent calendars and I'm just waiting for some packaging material and then I'm going to label and package everything and um, get it all ready to be sent out by... Hopefully, start of October. That would be great. It'd be good if I could do that. 
So they're coming, the advent calendars, and it's always really enjoyable to do them. I really like dyeing minis. You just get totally different results than if you dye full skeins, and because I dye them as minis, and um, yes, and it's fun to sort of combine all the different colorways and things. So I've been having a good time doing the advent calendars, like I always do. But that's that's all for this time. I'm going to finish my cup of tea, and I am going to go and pick up pick up my kids from school and take them to the tennis lessons so that will be fun and um, yes maybe I'll be able to enjoy the sunshine for a little bit with my cup of tea before I have to go thank you so much for joining me here today in my studio thank you so much for um, letting me share some of my favorite things and knitting with you I hope you have enjoyed I will see you next time and until then, take care. Bye.